Uh, welcome again to this uh, presentation. Uh, we are in the series of the Tabernacles, and uh, today uh, in this presentation, we are dealing with uh, the last trump that is uh, uh, this part 10 of the Tabernacle, the tabernacle series. And uh, we are going to look at uh, the last trumpet. And so let us give thanks as we go through the presentation. Abba Father in heaven, again, we say praise be unto thy name. And uh, we pray that uh, you may give us uh, a clear mind to be able to comprehend spiritual things. And uh, at the end of the day, that Lord, we may live a life that is worthy to be accounted your disciples. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to welcome you wherever you are viewing, wherever you are listening, and those who have joined on Zoom and uh, on Facebook, that uh, may the Lord uh, be with us as we look uh, into his words and uh, see what is his purpose upon our lives. And uh, if uh, there has been something that has been waited or has been waited uh, for so long is uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And uh, we know that uh, it's not the will of God to afflict willingly his sons and his daughters to be here on earth to wait for him uh, as we are waiting for him in the world that is full of darkness and trouble. But also we appreciate because we are told that um, the ways of the Lord, he knows no haste, he knows no uh, slow. And so everything happens in time. As even the first coming of Jesus Christ happened in time, so we understand that uh, even his um, second coming shall happen in time. And uh, it is his will that uh, none of us may be lost, but everyone may come to repentance and be saved. And so yesterday we were, or uh, in the previous presentation, we were looking at um, the, the trumpet, uh, and we are told that trumpet after trumpet uh, should be uh, should be blown, or an alarm must go forth to prepare people for the second coming of Jesus Christ, and uh, uh, his righteousness must be preached to all the four corners of the world as a witness. The gospel must go forth as a witness. Then the end shall be uh, shall come. And so, in this uh, issue of uh, um, the last trump in the Christ chapter 4 verses 6 we are told then he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of the lord unto the rubber saying not by might not not by power but by my spirit said the lord of hosts the race is not for the swift but only for those who wait upon the lord if you look at uh, joshua's conquest of jericho it stands in history as a type of Christ conquering the world. And uh, it is only those who are daily having a fellowship with him and partaking of his spirit that will be able to understand the signs and the time. They will be in fellowship with him. And like Joshua, they will be prepared to conquer the land that is to be conquered. And so... We are told that Christ leads in battle. Christ leads in battle. In this uh, warfare we are engaged in, it is only by leaning on Jesus Christ that we can be able to, uh, uh, to, 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 to fight the battle uh, and win. And uh, we read in Hebrews chapter, I'll go to Hebrews chapter 12, and just share something, uh, the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 12. First of all, I'll read something in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and uh, verses um, 
32 to 38, 32 to 38, but uh, call to remembrance, um, call, but call to remembrance the former days uh, in which after, in which uh, after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions, partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. For ye had compassion of me in my bones and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourself that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So as we are waiting for the last trump to be sounded, we are being told the just shall live by faith. And uh, this issue of the just living by faith in the book of First John, chapter 5, verse 18, the book of First John, chapter 5, verse um, 18, we are told, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth him, and that um, wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. So it is only being in Jesus Christ that um, we can be able to face the world with faith and have a surety that we shall be able to overcome the evil one so that when the last trump shall be sounded, we will be not part of those who draw back, but those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, having faith in Jesus Christ, that um, that which he has um, started in us, he shall be able uh, to accomplish it. Only by faith can we be able to defeat the world's problem. Only by faith can we be able to defeat the world's problem. And so this faith that we are talking about, actually, it gives us victory. It gives us, um, um, uh, it gives us power to be able to face the enemy daily. In fact, uh, faith is a substance of things which are hoped for, things which are not seen. And uh, we should learn to walk by faith and not by sight, knowing that uh, God's biddings are uh, his enablings, knowing that uh, God's biddings are his enablings. And so Christ himself, uh, we find that uh, the, 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 the conquest of um, Joshua over Jericho is a type of uh, uh, Christ conquering uh, his enemy at the end of uh, this world. And uh, it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, um, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Are thou for us or for our adversaries? Or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as a captain of the host of the Lord, um, um, I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Lose thy shoe for, from off thy foot, for the place wherein thou standest is a holy ground. And Joshua did so. And you find that um, Christ is the one leading his army, that uh, there will be no stray soldier in the camp of Christ. And all shall be united as one to sound a trumpet in a certain sound. In fact, uh, I, I'll just uh, show you something in um, 1888 messages. 1888 messages, um, that is uh, 
page 903, paragraph 10. Um, allow me to show you this. 1888, uh, page 903, paragraph 10. And uh, if uh, Christ is among us and he is the, the captain, this is uh, what uh, we find will happen among us. Christ being the captain, this is uh, what uh, shall happen. Look at this, it is uh, wonderful. What we want is the spirit of Jesus. When we have this, we shall love one another. Here are the credentials that we are to bear. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye have love one to another, we need to pray more. And when we have Christ abiding in the soul, his spirit in me will harmonize with his spirit in you. And he who controls our minds controls also the heavenly intelligence and they cooperate with us. Then in every council, you will have the presence of one might in council. Jesus will be there. There will be no contention, no strife, no strife, stirring up of the worst passions of the heart. What we want is to find refuge in Jesus. What we want is to be converted. And oh, how I have longed for the converting power of God to go through uh, our assemblies. And so Christ is uh, uh, attesting a people on this earth if they can live in harmony, if they can work uh, with one heart and with one mind and go forth conquering to conquer as uh, the army of Joshua went and as the disciples went to preaching the gospel. And then if they can be able to pass the test, then they can be able to live in heaven uh, uh, in harmony. And so this is the time for preparation. This is the time to make sure that uh, we are coming together and fulfilling the unity of Christ in John chapter 17 and walking as one. Because once the last trump sound, there is no uh, again going into uh, uh, sinning and uh, um, repenting or uh, trying to bring the people, converting the people. The people are already converted. They are only, Christ, when he comes, he seals the character. Nothing changes. He seals the character that we have. And so as we are waiting for the last trump, it's not like the trump of the day of atonement to warn us that we have to prepare. The last trump is to seal our identity forever. So what are we doing in this time of waiting? In Joshua chapter 6, verse 2, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shall thou do six days. Now, why am I revisiting this story of Joshua? It is because Christ is assembling his army. Try to think about this, that uh, when Joshua was told to go and conquer Jericho, there were others who were going against the command. Actually, the enemy could have defeated them. In this hour that we are living in, the Lord wants his people to unite on the forefront and be able to do his work. The, spasm the spasmodic uh, uh, movements of this time like, are like uh, we are told and train horses. One plunges forward and another one plunges backward. Once works diligently with his effort, another one tries to draw the other back. It is like we have not understood Christ is making up his army and uh, uh, he is not uh, 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 really working in stray people uh, who wants to do their own will and who want to fight for supremacy. They want to be the leaders, but um, they will not like to be servants. He tells the disciples that uh, the people of the world do these things. They lord over each other, but it shall not be amongst you. So if Jesus Christ is our captain, why should we be fighting for positions? Why should we be fighting for supremacy? Why should we have all these discordant movements? Uh, one person saying this and another person saying this, instead of having an upper room experience like the disciples and be able to be one in spirit, 
so that the latter rain may fall and then we may be able to sound the loud cry. It was only until the disciples were assembled one another in one accord in the upper room experience, studying the prophecies that um, pertain to the time that they were living in, putting away their differences and their infancy of who shall be who and who shall be who in the kingdom of God. It was after they had put everything aside that Christ was able to minister to them the former reign. We cannot expect something less in the time that we are living in. We must work as even the disciples worked in the uh, day of Pentecost, prior to the day of Pentecost. In uh, Psalms, the division 133, Psalms 133, uh, this is uh, what we are told. Uh, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon uh, the head that ran, um, that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that ascended upon the mountains of Zion, for there is the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forever. So Aaron was uh, the high priest, but now Christ is the high priest. The ointment that flowed on Aaron's head, even to the skirts, it is the oil of the Holy Spirit that Christ, as a high priest, is wishing to bless his people with. And this is where he commanded his blessing, even life forevermore. And it is only when the brethren dwell together in unity, it is when they are not attacking each other, but attacking the enemy. And so you find that uh, uh, this Josh, the, the army of Joshua, were together and they went to against uh, the common enemy. In Joshua 6, 4, and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day he shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow um, with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with, shout with a great joy and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. So it was these people coming together and sounding the trumpet with a long blast. It sounds, it, 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 uh, that sounds like a loud cry, that uh, it's not something that um, uh, sounds uh, silently, but it's, it is something that blasts, something that blasts is hard, uh, with the people who are afar off. And so that is how the loud cry has to go, uh, warning the people about the second coming of Jesus Christ as we wait for the last trump where Christ shall be revealed in the heavens and he shall gather. He shall not be silent, but when the Lord comes, he shall blow a trumpet and shall gather the elect in the four corners of uh, the world. And uh, in Joshua 6, 13, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew the trumpets and the armed men went before them. But the rare reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priest going on and blowing with the, the uh, trumpets. Then um, we find that uh, Joshua was commanded to march for seven days and blow the trumpets as a warning. Every day, he marched blowing trumpet was an invitation to the inhabitants of Jericho to leave the city and join in the march. Uh, as Rahab was saved, every person in Jericho could have been saved. God is not exclusive where salvation is concerned. God extends the invitation seven times longer on the seventh day of uh, the march. So uh, uh, we find this, that um, God extended the invitation seven times longer on the seventh day of the march. What does this teach us in, uh, uh, in, in Joshua's march? We are told, for six days, the host of Israel made the circuit of the city. The seventh day came and the first was, and, and with the first dawn of light, Joshua marshaled the armies of the Lord. Now they were directed to march seven times around Jericho and at a mighty peal, from the trumpet to shout with a loud voice for God had given them the city. Um, as the seventh circuit was completed, the long procession paused. The trumpet, which was for an interval, had been silent, now broke forth in a blast that shook the very earth. The walls of solid stone with their massive towers and battlements tottered and heaved from their foundations 
and with a crash fell in ruin to the earth. The inhabitants of Jericho were paralyzed with terror and the host of Israel marched in and took possession of the city. The Israelites had not gained the victory by their own power. The conquest had been holy, the Lord's, and as the first fruits of the land, the city, with all that it contained, was to be devoted as a sacrifice to God. And so we are told in Review and Herald, uh, in uh, Review and Herald, May, May 5, 1896, it is a dangerous thing for men to resist the spirit of truth and grace and righteousness because it is manifestations are not according to their ideas and have not come in the line of their methodological plans. The Lord works in his own way and according to his own devising. Let men pray that they may be divested of self and may be in harmony with heaven. And so we cannot be even in harmony with heaven if at this time we are divided and we are not listening uh, from the captain of the army itself. Continued on, that uh, in TM 300, let me tell you that the Lord will work in this last work in a manner every much out of the common order of things and in a way that will be contrary to any human planning. You will always find that uh, men will like to take over uh, the, the work of God. And instead of just uh, following his directions, they will want to weave in uh, their own thread in uh, what God has directed them to do. If Joshua could have done this, then he could have been defeated. We must also learn to hear from Jesus Christ and execute the commandments as even he tells us. Because at the last trump, when it is sounded, as I said, our character will be sealed. And if you have been in this habit of uh, trying to improve on God's method, then in the earth made new, you may just try to improve on the methods of God as even Lucifer, before he became Satan, tried that and became Satan to improve the government of God, but to no avail. In TM 300, we are told there will be those among us who will always want to control the work of God, to dictate even what movement shall be made when the work goes forward under the direction of the angel who joins the third angel in the message to be given to the world. God will use ways and means by which it will be seen that he is taking the reins in his own hands. The workers will be surprised by the simple means that he will use to bring about and affect his, his work of righteousness, TM 300. And so um, we, we come to uh, trying to look at uh, the character of the churches and uh, even this last church that uh, will be living upon the face of the earth when uh, Christ is revealed upon the clouds of the air. How, how about it? In, in whose uh, commandment is it working? We are told the names of the seven churches are symbolic of the church in different periods of the Christian era. The number seven indicates completeness and is symbolic of the fact that the messages extend to the end of time while the symbols used reveal the condition of the church at different periods in the history of the world. This is Acts of Apostles, page 585, paragraph 3. And so, each era, a trumpet sounded when judgment came upon an entity that forsook God. The first trumpet sounded with the destruction um, of, um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, J Jerusalem. You, you find that um, uh, 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 it, it was a warning, per se, that... Um, and I, I'm not speaking about um, those trumpets you, you, you find in uh, the book of uh, Revelation chapter 8, uh, going to chapter 9, but just a trumpet of warning of those who reject Jesus Christ. There were trumpets which were alarmed in the tabernacles to warn the people of various things that were happening. And so when Jerusalem was destroyed, it was a warning to the world that actually this they had forsook the ways of God. And then he sent an army to destroy them. That will be even in the end when the trumpet to awake those who are sleeping to share in eternal life shall be sounded. The same trumpet shall be a warning and a final warning to the wicked that um, they had been rejected forever. And the brightness of the Lord's coming shall slay them only to be awakened after the millennium to 
find that they were lost forever. So let us learn from Joshua's obedience to God, and let us also learn from Jerusalem rejection of Jesus Christ. Joshua obeyed God, and the trumpet was a trumpet of victory over Jericho. And um, um, Jerusalem rejected Jesus Christ, and then the army of Titus um, uh, came and uh, destroyed the city. We should be learning uh, of these things. And so uh, uh, in the time that we are living in, is um, we, we are living in the time of uh, uh, the trumpet sounding, even uh, the seventh trumpet, when it is sounded, the mystery of God shall be ended. The mystery of God shall be ended. Now, this mystery is uh, the completing of the character of God in his people. All that has been prophesied about Jesus Christ doing in the lives of his people shall be accomplished in this seventh uh, 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 trumpet, which we are told actually in Colossians that um, it is Christ in us, the hope of glory. In Colossians chapter 1, in uh, Colossians chapter 1 and uh, verses uh, 26, 25 to 27. Whereof I am a, I made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so we find that uh, in this sounding of the seventh trump, the mystery of God has to be completed. The righteousness of Christ has to be reproduced in his people. That um, in Isaiah chapter 61, verses 10, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 10, we read of something also beautiful that uh, in this sounding of the trumpet, the seventh trumpet, something uh, must be accomplished. Isaiah 61, verses 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord my I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud and as the garden causeth the thing that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and uh, praise to spring forth before all nations. And this is what has to be accomplished. The righteousness of God in us has to be demonstrated in the whole one. You know, um, in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 18, there are two faces of the angel of uh, the book of Revelation chapter 18. There is the revelation of the angel and there is the proclamation of the angel. Most of the time we find ourselves concerned so much with the proclamation of that angel than the revelation of that angel. In, uh, in uh, Christ object lesson, COL page uh, 415, I presume it should be paragraph um, 415 paragraph five and 416 paragraph one. Talking about, um, as this trumpet sounds and the mystery of God is completed, what is expected of us? In Christ Object Lesson, page 415, paragraph 5 to 416, paragraph 1, we are told that those who wait for the bridegroom's coming are to say to the people, behold, you are God. The last race of merciful light, the last message of mass to be given to the world is a revelation of his character of love. The children of God are to manifest his glory. In their own life and character, they are to reveal what the grace of God has done for them. The light of the sun of righteousness is to shine forth in good works, in words of truth, 
and deeds of holiness. And so you find that uh, the only part that people are interested in in Revelation chapter 18 is the proclaiming of the fall of Babylon. But revealing this character, what the righteousness of God has done into the lives of the people, it's some, somehow evading people uh, a lot. Yet, the message cannot go with glory and power by proclamation. The message goes by power, by revelation. It is only the revelation of Christ's character in us that will make the angel of Revelation chapter 18 uh, uh, um, uh, shine the glory upon the face of all the earth in power. And so it is a time that we started thinking if uh, in the sounding of the seventh trumpet, the mystery of God shall be accomplished, how is it with my own life? Am I revealing that character to be fitted to proclaim the, the message? It is only when we reveal the message that we can share in the proclamation of the message itself. In fact, the greatest sermon to be able to preach is the sermon live. And that is what uh, we are looking at at uh, the sounding of this uh, sevens, uh, the last trump or the trump of Jesus Christ. And so, um, we are told that the, bad, the battle of Armageddon will be fought, 3 SM 426, the power of the Holy Ghost must be upon us and the captain of the Lord's host will stand at the head of the angels of heaven to direct the battle. Solemn events before us are yet to transpire. Trumpet after trumpet is be sounded, vile after vile poured out one after another upon the inhabitants of the earth. It is not like before where actually the human instrumentalities will be at the helm of the work uh, in quotes but uh, Christ himself will be the captain amongst his people. In fact, um, he does the work and then uh, uh, he comes and takes his people home. He is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords to fight for uh, our battles. And so what we ought to do is um, to prepare ourselves to be used of God, is to prepare uh, ourselves to be used by God. And so in Life Sketches, page 65.3, uh, a question is asked, who shall be able to stand? Now, I'd like to bring this on the screen as uh, I go into my last uh, uh, points. Then we all cried out, who shall be able to stand? Is my robe spotless? Then the angel ceased to sing, and there was some time of silence, awful silence when Jesus spoke, those who have clean hands and pure hearts shall be able to stand. My grace is sufficient for you. Life sketches, page 65, paragraph three. Again, then Jesus' silver trumpet sounded as he descended on the cloud wrapped in flames of fire. He guessed on the graves of the sleeping saints, then raised his eyes and uh, hands um, and hands to heaven and cried, awake, 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 ye that sleep in the dust and arise. Then there was a mighty, earthquake. And so you find that uh, only those whose robe are spotless will be the ones who shall be able to stand when he appeared. The, the, the question that um, should preoccupy our mind is that uh, is my robe spotless. In uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.16, we are told for the Lord himself <clears throat> will uh, shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Right now, um, we, we are talking about um, the trumpets, alarm, and warnings that we may be prepared. We looked at it in the last uh, presentation, and we are looking at this issue. When the last trump sounds, even the trump of God, will we be prepared? As even the mystery of God is being revealed in the, uh, in the, uh, in the seventh trumpet, and when the Lord will come with his trumpet, we shall we be able to stand when he appeareth? How shall it be with the us? 
the last two slides, uh, we are told this in the book uh, Maranatha. The coming of Christ is nearer than when we first believed. The great controversy is nearing it is end. The judgment of God are in the land. They speak in solemn warning, saying, Be also ready, for in such an hour as he think not the Son of Man cometh. Matthew chapter 22, chapter 24, verse 44. At that time, you think that uh, uh, the Son of Man uh, is not coming. That is when he will come. But um, we are told we are not of the darkness. Last slide. Long have we waited, but our hope is not to grow dim. If we can but see the king in his beauty, we shall be forever blessed. I feel as if I must cry aloud, homeward bound. We are nearing the time when Christ will come in the power and great glory to take his ransomed ones to their eternal home. So we have looked at this issue of Joshua's trump and his victory over Jericho. And the last trump of Jesus Christ, his victory over his own enemies. But here between, we have the seventh trumpet. And in the days of the blowing of the seventh trumpet, we are told that the mystery of God must be finished, which he has spoken to his prophet. And we find that Christ in us, the hope of glory is that mystery, which means that sin must be overcome before that trumpet that shall awake the people to, uh, uh, to everlasting life. And not only that, before probation closes and the seven last plagues start falling, all of us must have overcome sin. We must be able to live in the presence of our holy God, pure and spotless. Otherwise, may the Lord continue being with us. May we continue seeking his face and uh, that when he cometh, we may be part of this little flock that will say, this is the Lord whom we have uh, waited upon and who has come to save us. May we continue seeking him daily in our lives until his righteousness is revealed in us, then we can proclaim the same to the world. Shall we be able to uh, pray? Shall we be able to pray as uh, we bring this uh, to an end? Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you because uh, you have been so merciful unto us that uh, you will never let your son come before your church is prepared. And so we pray that you may prepare us. We pray that uh, your love may be revealed in us. We pray that uh, we may have the same mind that Jesus did. And above all, Lord, help us to keep uh, our robes unspotted and uh, be found in worthy of the glory and honor unto thy name in Jesus' name we pray.